here in our Weather or Water Cooler Series, we like to introduce you to some of our alums and the interesting work they are doing in the various sectors of the weather enterprise. Tonight, our guest is Nathan Flinchbaugh, Meteorology Class of 2016, currently a route analyst for a company called Storm Geo. Welcome back to the old alma mater, Nathan. Thank you. Great to be back. Yeah. So let's turn the clock back to 2016 um, and graduating from Penn State. Briefly take us through what have you been doing professionally since then? Uh, sure. So I graduated from Penn State uh, December of 2016. Uh, right after that, went to Mount Washington and did a stint uh, up there for the winter season. Uh, later that year, uh, I relocated to New York where I uh, took the job at Storm Geo. Started out as a fleet information technician, uh, which I held until January of 2019, I believe. Uh, and then I moved into the route analyst position, which I currently hold and now work remote uh, from State College for. We have to dig a little bit deeper, no pun intended, into Mount Washington. Yeah. I have not been to the top. Um, that was, you said, for, for the one winter season. What was that like? I mean, what did you do, and, and how did your time at Penn State prepare you for that? Uh, it was pretty brutal. There were definitely some things that uh, Penn State helped me prepare for, and there's also some things about Mount Washington that I was not prepared for at all. Uh, uh, but all in all, um, uh, I, I took what I learned uh, under the direction of Bell Syrette, uh working as a co-op observer in State College and basically applied it uh, to Mount Washington when it came to uh, going outside, taking a look at the weather, and then converting it over to a METAR to be sent to the Weather Service. That being said, it was very different than here in that uh, any time a cloud went over the, the, uh, the top of the mountain, the super cooled water droplets would stick to all of the instrumentation and it would form a really thick layer of rime ice, which would be my task to go up sometime in, sometimes in 80, 90 mile per hour winds and dislodge with a crowbar uh, so that the, the instrumentation would be clear for our um, observation. Uh, but other than that, on clearer days, uh, I did a lot of forecasting and worked um, uh, did some research and, and, and some outreach and, and stuff that wouldn't be too uh, uh, dissimilar from what I did with the Campus Weather Service here. Fascinating. So Bill Syrett doesn't have you using a crowbar here. No, but he, sh he should have. He should <laughs> <laughs> Let's stick with Mount Washington just briefly. When is the summit open to visitors and what are the possible ways to get to the summit? Yeah, so uh, Mount Washington is open, uh, generally speaking, approximately mid-May to mid-October, and I emphasize the word approximately, <laughs> because it is very much weather dependent. Um, but there's four ways that, that I know of that you can get to the summit. The one would be the Cog Railway, which goes up the western slope. Uh, and then on the eastern slope, they have the auto road, which you can pay a toll and drive your own automobile up. Or you can take a guided tour in one of their um, vans. And then the fourth way would be to hike it, obviously. Um, uh, there are multiple trails that lead to the summit. Uh, the one caveat, though, is that you definitely need to check the weather forecast before you <laughs> decide to head up. Over 100 people have, have died on the summit trying oh. to hike, um, mostly due to um, a lack of understanding of, of just how severe the weather is. Okay, so let's spend the rest of the time talking about your, your, uh, your role at Storm Geo. Originally, you were fleet information technician, and then you transitioned into route analysis. Take us through those, those jobs and exactly what you do. Yeah, absolutely. So when I first joined Storm Geo, I really did not uh, know a whole lot about the shipping industry. It was kind of a new frontier for me. So the fleet information technician position really helped uh, expose me to what I would later be doing as a route analyst. Basically, uh, I was collecting all the data that was coming in from um, the, the ships, from the charters and whatnot, making sure it was accurate, injecting it into our uh, software so that when it was handed over to the route analyst, they could accurately make a route recommendation. When I moved into the route analyst position, I was basically piggybacking off of the, the fleet information technician position where I was reviewing uh, the various constraints uh, that, that these vessels have, reviewing the weather, and then issuing a route recommendation. And then after the route recommendation is issued, uh, we'll follow the vessel as it goes across the sea. We have a 24-7, 365 hotline that they can get in touch with us and, and speak with the route analyst if there's any problems with the route or any issues or concerns regarding the weather. Um, so it's a 24-7, 365 type uh, of business, and uh, that's what I've been doing. Um, 
much like other parts of meteorology, um, it's not so much uh, hardcore meat and potatoes forecasting, but it's more so consulting. So this is what the forecast is. How does this help our bottom line? Um, just basically on a, on a maritime level. All right, just a quick follow-up to that. On any given shift that you're on, how many different ships or vessels might you be communicating with? Uh, is it just one or just a couple? No, it, it could be anywhere from 20 to oh, 40 to okay. 50. Um, yeah, and, and that's the thing that's unique about it is that, you know, I may have five vessels that are in the exact same geographical area, exact same forecast, but we'll get five different route recommendations Got because it. of the, the Got constraints it. of the ship. Um, we're almost out of time. Um, thinking back, what is a favorite memory of being here at Penn State? Well, I have a lot from Penn State, but I, I think the top one would be uh, in 2016 down at Beaver Stadium when we took down number two, Ohio State. <laughs> Particularly the play with the block field goal return for a touchdown by Grant Haley. I don't think I've ever um, been in Beaver Stadium when it was louder. I'm going to remember that forever. I'm hurt. I thought you were going to say it was taking <laughs> synoptic meteorology with me. No, that was a close second. That was <laughs> Nathan Flinchbaugh, currently a uh, route analyst with Storm Geo. Thanks so much for stopping by, Nathan. Thank you for having me. It's my pleasure. And we will be back in a moment with a recap of the short-range forecast.